Hey you guys, welcome back to Living by the F Word, or if you're new here, welcome to Living by the F Word. My name is Jess, I'm a fine artist, flight attendant, and festival enthusiast, and here on my channel I talk about F words I'm passionate about. Now today's video I'm going to be talking about a highly requested topic, which is how to attend music festivals for free. I am pretty experienced with this in several different ways, so I'm actually going to give you 10 different ways. That way you can kind of maybe navigate which route is best for you. I'm also going to talk about some of the positions I have had in order to attend some festivals for free, so let's get started right now. So first things first, just to give you a little background, I have covered media for festivals, I have been a tour guide for festivals, I have volunteered at festivals, I have been a speaker at festival conferences. So. I am pretty knowledgeable on this topic and I think a lot of people are kind of curious the different ways that you can go about it. So that's what I'm hoping to help you out with today. Now let's get into the first way, which is being a tour guide. All right, so the first thing I have on my list is being a tour guide or doing some type of group tour, shuttle service, something along those lines. And the reason why I have it on my list first is because this was one of the first ways I ever got to attend some mega festivals for free. So I worked for an amazing company called Awake Tours, which specializes in VIP group tours to music festivals like Coachella, Tomorrowland, Ultra Croatia, Yacht Week, EDC Las Vegas. There are so many tours. Go check the website out. But I was really lucky enough to be a part of the launch of this company way back in 2014, 2015, and 2016. I was their Coachella tour guide, so we would do group tours to Los Angeles, then head out to Palm Springs or Joshua Tree, go to Coachella, and then after that we would do a Vegas strip tour. We would go clubbing in Vegas, have penthouse parties. It was just so much fun, and I absolutely am so grateful for this job and Anita, who is the operator and tour manager for Wake Tours. I am actually probably gonna do a whole separate video about this job just because I could go on forever about this company and how much fun it is. But just to give you an idea, some of my responsibilities were to make sure everyone was on the bus when they needed to be. I did a roll call, made sure that everyone was there before we left to go anywhere. Once we got to the festival grounds, I made sure everyone knew which way the pickup drop-off zone was for our group bus. I made sure that if people were at the festival grounds, if they had questions about stages or anything like that, or say they got separated from their friends, I would link back up with them and then help them find people, you know, stuff like that. But mostly it was just to have fun and party with these people. And I made lifelong friendships. I'm still friends with Anita and so many people that were on these tours. And it was just absolutely such an incredible experience. So I highly recommend that if you can get involved in some type of group tour company, definitely do it. And I also just want to give you some pointers. I took the application process very seriously. So I wrote a cover letter as to why I'm so passionate about festivals. I wrote a cover letter as to how my customer service experience would benefit the company and the group tours. And I also gave a whole resume of all the festivals I had attended. So definitely when you're putting yourself out there, make sure that you are just passionate about what you're talking about and what you're doing. Let's move on to number two. So number two on my list, I have media, which is probably the most commonly known way to get an exchange for a free festival ticket is like kind of like a work exchange to either be a blog post writer, a staff writer for some type of mega blog or company that has a online website. You also could do videography, whether that is for a specific artist or for the festival itself, or even if you have your own brand, you can do that as well. Same with photography, pretty similar, or you can you know, team up with some of the mega blogs and do videos and blog posts for them. And of course, more so recently, we have a whole community of festival YouTubers that also can get exchange for free tickets through their content, through educational videos about the festival, what to wear to the festival, and things like that. Now, there's different routes that you can take with this. I think if you're just starting off, what you should do is you should maybe reach out to some of the mega blogs, kind of be a staff writer at multiple blogs, see where you fit 
in most or just get your name out there start getting the experience of writing anywhere even if it's just for your local newspaper anything really and then start reaching out to some of these blogs that need coverage because their blogs are so big they obviously can't be in all these different festivals at once so they usually send other staff writers out which would be you to cover that particular event now the other route you could take is doing your own personal blog that was the route i did so for anyone that doesn't know living by the f-word.com is actually my blog that is how I started out. It was a fan perspective blog that gave reviews to festival, sorry, to festival producers and also attendees just to make sure that they were having the best experience possible. I basically really loved doing write-ups that helped festival producers solve issues and make their festival better for the following year. And I also started out doing a lot of fan perspective after movies. So what I would do is I would film the crowd. I would film people dancing. I would actually film the experience from my perspective and release these really cool after movies that people were really excited about because they would see themselves in it. Whereas lots of times in the official after movies, it's kind of rare where you see some of the actual attendees. A lot of it almost seems a little staged sometimes, not all the time, but you know what I mean. Official after movies are just a little bit different. So I was heavily focused on fan perspective content. So that's another way you can go about it and another way you can get free festival tickets. All right, up next on the list for number three, I have vendors. So this could be anything from a food vendor, a clothing vendor, or even how I got to go for free was through the pedicab people movers, the bikes that you see transporting people around the campsites and the festival grounds if it's too long of a walk. That is how I actually got to be a part of staff and vendor that way for two festivals, Bonnaroo and Electric Forest. So this was through my friend's company, someone that I had met at a festival conference, which I highly recommend if you guys can go into festival conferences and network, definitely do that because that's how I met a lot of these people and got to where I am today. But basically I met my friend Andrew who owns this company that runs all the bikes. And so he always was needing some extra help. So I would help set up basically the campsite because when you're having a large camp or group camp that is on site and is actually working as part of the staff basically you need to have kind of like a full-blown kitchen you need to have a whole hangout chill area you need to have a whole area where people can charge up their electronics charge up their bikes charge up whatever type of battery system they are using and that is basically what i did i volunteered by building the campsite breaking it down and things like that but in exchange i got to go to some really amazing festivals through a vendor band. Now you also could just be a clothing vendor. Sometimes these clothing vendors need extra help. They obviously can't be working at their booth all day, all night, although most of them do, but lots of times they will have some type of volunteer come in and you might get to experience the festival for a couple hours a day or however much it may be, but this is another route you can take. I also know some of my friends that worked for a beer vending company and it was very simple, you guys. All they had to do was basically certain mornings they had to go unload kegs from a truck, roll them over to the bar, shuttle them, I don't know, on a wagon over to the bar, set it up for the day and then they were done and they had free electric forest tickets. So there's really some cool ways that you can get involved with vendors. So I definitely recommend looking into it. For number four, I have festival crew. So this could be really a wide range of positions. It could be any, anything from parking, parking staff where you make sure people are parking where they're supposed to or not supposed to. It could be something like an info booth where you see information with maps or anything that people need to know about the festival. It could be really a whole a range of things like also it could be artist relations or ground control. There's different positions depending on the festival we are talking about. So I have done, just to give you some examples, I've done volunteer work as festival crew for Groove Crews. I have been a part of their artist relations team, which was so awesome getting to check in some artists. Like it was really cool checking in Hot Since 82, Roger Sanchez, some people I really, really love. And I got to like meet them, check them in to get onto the boat. I have also worked with their captain support team so this was like a volunteer position, which I'll get into later, but it was basically like their informational center 
kind of like how you'd see an info booth somewhere, but for captain support on Groove Cruise, it's kind of if you need a room swap, if you need any information as to where certain parties are, things like that. So there's also festivals like Electric Forest that do things like this. So it just kind of depends. You usually have to look on their frequently asked questions page and you will see a volunteer section. There are tons of festivals that do this. So definitely look into it. Number five, I have build team. So basically this is something I'm not too experienced with, but I still have some ideas for you. So this could be someone that is even a promoter. So obviously if you are a promoter or you are creating or curating your own festival, you will have to be a part of everything, including the build team, right? You need to be a part of a lot. It's kind of like a different hat that you'd be wearing, but it's still, I would say, part of this group here. Also, you could do stage builders, set design, things like that, the BJs, the actual visual arts, things like that I would categorize in the build team because you kind of have to be on site prior and you're obviously building structures. Now, I would say that a lot of these positions are usually outsourced from separate companies, but you never know. You could also get involved with companies, for example, like the Do Lab. The Do Lab is a company that runs Lightning in a Bottle. They also had a festival called Woogie Weekend, and they, of course, have their own stage at Coachella, which is one of North America's biggest festivals. And they are a volunteer-based company that builds stages that also double as art and shade structure. So just an idea. You can get into building things. If you're interested in building your own art, you could always create art see if the festival would be interested in having it. You know, it's really important that festivals have these types of places for festival attendees to chill out. So things like benches or even structures that people can climb on or play with. It's very common to see these at festivals now. So definitely look into it if you're a carpenter or something like that and you want to go this route. Next up on my list for number six, I have guest speaker or workshop panelist. So I was lucky enough to be a speaker at X Live, which is one of North America's largest music festival conferences. Such an amazing experience. I got to talk to festival producers about how to make your festival the best so that people keep coming back more and more. I was on a panel with Tucker Gumber, who is known as the festival guy, Alexa, who's the prior manager of Pedicab People Movers, and my friend Jordan, who used to work for various EDM blogs. So it was really cool. The four of us got to speak on this conference at panel and go to the conference for free, which is amazing. So you could also do this at festivals. So just to give you some examples, lots of transformational festivals have panels or workshops. For example, Envision Festival, Halloween, I know has workshops. In fact, I almost was really close to applying, but since I haven't been there yet, I just announced I'm gonna go this year for the first time. Uh, I wanna kind of get a lay of the land, but then I might apply to do some type of hat workshop. I love creating hats, as you can see. I love creating things. So I think it would be so cool for people to be able to express themselves through a workshop and build their own hat or headpiece or something like that. So just to give you an idea, like that is something I was thinking about I could do in the future. But yeah, you can be a speaker at the Brainery at Electric Forest. They're always looking for people to talk on panels or talks basically on a subject that you are knowledgeable about. Things like Lightning and Bottle, that's another event you could do. Mystery Land had panels. It, it really is more well known and is coming more common at festivals that there's panels, workshops, and other extracurriculars like yoga or breathing exercises, really anything. So if you are knowledgeable in a subject, this is definitely the route you should take. Brand collaborations. So this could be something with a clothing company or a brand that specializes in a festival goers product and you can kind of do a trade-off for brand content with them. So it could also work with things like Red Bull or I've seen even cigarette companies. It's, you know, I used to be a smoker and I don't smoke anymore, so I'm not trying to promote smoking, but what I'm saying is there are larger companies that do brand partnerships on site that you could volunteer and work for. I know Glow Effects is another company that does rave accessories, that does 
uh, meetups with influencers. So basically these influencers come and do like content for them for the day, do meetups, work at their booth, and it's kind of like a trade-off exchange. So it's just another idea to do a brand collaboration. And sometimes even fashion brands will send you to a festival too, just so that you can shoot in their clothing at that specific festival. So you kind of just have to get yourself out there, but it's another route you could take. Number eight, I have cleanup crew. Now, this obviously could also kind of be lumped into that festival crew category I was talking about earlier, but there are actual companies that do separate cleanup crew that I thought it would be really important to bring up in this video. So first company is Clean Vibes LLC. They are a completely separate company from all of these festivals and they do cleanup and you can volunteer with their company to do pre-cleanup setup, during the festival cleanup, or post-festival cleanup. They've done festival cleanup for Bonnaroo, Firefly, Outside Lands, tons and tons of festivals. So you just need to look on their site and figure out what festival you would like to do for a work exchange and you could really help make a difference by keeping the festival grounds clean. I think they even have people that speak during the festival so that people aren't littering anywhere. So that's just another really cool way to help out the festival grounds and the community that you are traveling to. Also pocket ashtrays, which I am a huge fan of. I love pocket ashtrays. The first time I ever got one was at Desert Hearts Festival, but they have them at Envision. They've done them at Shambhala, basically any transformational festival pocket ashtrays are at. And this specific company basically educates people on the importance of recycling and disposing of your cigarette butts properly. So they design a little pocket ashtray where you can just put out your cigarette butt and you don't have to put it on the ground or anything like that. And then you could bring it to one of their recycling centers where they will dispose of it properly. Now, I know that they have people that can volunteer to talk about how important this is. So it's just another kind of part of the cleanup crew, keeping the festival grounds clean that you can volunteer that way. Number nine, we have live art, artists, fashion designer, any type of creatives out there. Basically, if you love painting, if you love drawing, if you love any type of creative outlet, there are so many festivals that have art galleries that you could have your art be in. There are live arts um, paintings at stages at Electric Forest within the forest. Um, Envision Festival is another one that does a lot of live art, lightning in a bottle. There's just so many festivals out there that I'm probably missing that do live art, but if you are a painter or a drawer or you're interested in it, definitely just put yourself out there. They're always looking for people because it's such a fun experience to have this at festivals. Now, also, if you are a clothing designer or you like to design headpieces or clothing for performers. There are always performers. Look at EDC, look at Electric Forest, look at a ton of the Asomniac events, Beyond Wonderland, Escape. All those performers, who do you think is clothing them? You know, Insomniac, they outsource to companies. And if you're a creative, you can potentially have your clothing and your ideas on these performers. And last up, I have win tickets or a ticket contest. Now, of course, this isn't as common as some of the other ones. Like it's very rare for you to win festival tickets, but I have attended festivals like Electric Zoo, Mysteryland in the United States. I have attended festivals for free through winning tickets. So it's one of those things where big companies like you'll see Radiate or I Heart Raves or all these companies that are kind of partnering with festivals to give free giveaways for festivals. And so you never know if you don't try, there's always ticket contests. I know it probably seems like, oh, I'll never win, but it, you really could because I have as well. So once again, you just have to put yourself out there, which kind of leads me into the wrap up of this video. And these are just kind of my tips for you. Number one is you never know if you don't try. Okay, what's the worst thing that could happen? You either don't hear back from this festival if you send in an application, you don't get to go for free, you have to buy your ticket, but you never know if you don't put yourself out there. 
one of my favorite quotes is dreams don't work unless you do and just think about it if you don't put in the work your dreams are not gonna come true. So that's why I love that quote so much, but it's just really important to really try to put yourself out there. If you just keep being in this mentality of, oh, I don't have the right numbers, I don't have enough following. I mean, you can't think like that. I don't know about you guys, but my following is not so big. And as you can see, I have attended lots of festivals for free just because I have shown my passion for it. I've shown my drive for it. And I've kind of just built a portfolio throughout the years of trying different avenues. You can also get inspiration from other creators like Emma Capotis, Vibe with Aid, Fessel Finesser. If you think about all of their brands, their personal brands, their personality even, they did all this stuff because they cared about it. They loved it. They did it for free, but, you know, for a long time. Same for me. Did it for free for a pretty long time before actually getting in exchange for it. So... That's kind of tip number two is sometimes you have to do some work even if you're not getting something in exchange right away. And a perfect example of that is I went to SXM Festival the very first year that it ever was hosted in St. Martin. It was in 2016. I went down there. I didn't have media, but I wrote about it. I wrote about it on my blog. I wrote about where they could improve. I wrote about where they were winning. And you know what happened the next year? I got VIP media coverage through them because they were like, hey, this girl helped us out a lot with seeing where we needed to work. So you need to think about it, things like that, where you are just doing things because of your pure love for it and not always just for getting something for free, if that makes sense. Now, I'm not saying work for free all the time, <laughs> okay? I'm not saying that, but if you're just starting out, it's really important that you just kind of build your portfolio and your work up into like a media kit type of style. Oh, I remembered something I forgot to mention. Something that I forgot to mention was different festivals, if you're doing like a work exchange, will run their program differently. So certain festivals or companies, even like Clean Vibes, you have to purchase your ticket through them, you pay, and then after you complete your shift, then they will reimburse you. So Desert Hearts works that way too. I volunteered and I was part of their Red Artery crew. They reimburse you after you show up for your shifts. That way, if you don't show up, then, well, you paid for your ticket. There are other companies, for instance, like Groove Cruise, where they front it up front for you. You get your room, but then if you mess up, like if you are partying, part partying, if you are partying or not showing up, then they will pretty much ban you for life from their event. So just be mindful. Make sure that you really want to do this. If festivals are your passion, definitely go for it. But if festivals are kind of your release and your you know, way to get away from things and you just want to party all the time might not be the route for you to volunteer. All right. So I just kind of wanted to close up the video and say thank you so much for watching. If you ever have any questions, please let me know. I would love to elaborate on this more, but the video is kind of getting a little longer. So feel free to DM me. Feel free to ask me any questions in the comments. I'm always there for you. If you DM me, I'm at living by the dot F word on Instagram. Go ahead, follow me over there. And yeah, I really hope that this has helped you get some gears moving as to how you could attend festivals for free. It is so much fun, but just know it's always going to be a work exchange. So when you're saying free, just make sure you're responsible. Make sure you're showing up. There's definitely been some times where I've worked by myself because other people that have volunteered have not shown up for their shift. And you know, that's a big no-no. You basically can get banned from volunteering for that festival ever again. So definitely just be mindful. All right, those are my final tips. I really, really hope this was helpful. I'm so happy and excited to get this video out to you guys. Let me know what you think. Make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you join the fam. I talk about F words here on my channel. See you in the next one. Peace.